Hey everybody, welcome to Move with James. I am unsurprisingly James. In this video, we're going to explore how you can practice and build strength for arm balances and handstand without actually putting your hands on the ground. Bear with me, I know it sounds mad, but if you've been really working over the past months or years on arm balances and handstands and you've got a wrist injury and you're scared, oh no, I'm going to lose everything I've gained, I'm going to lose all that strength and all those patterns that I've built in my body, fear not. We can keep those patterns going, we can keep the strength building in the meantime whilst you heal, but without putting any weight in the hands. I'm going to show you exactly how to work with that. And if you've never done an arm balance or a handstand before, no problem. These exercises are fabulous drills that are going to get you really strong for the time when you do try an arm balance if you want to. Let's get cracking. <laughs> So as ever, we are starting at the front of the mat. So just coming to stand with your feet about hip distance apart and the inside edges of your feet really parallel. <clears throat> as you stand, turn the palms forward slightly, settle into your feet on the ground. And let's just take uh, two deep breaths in and out, into your nose, out through your nose. Settling into the body again. Settling into your breath for your practice. And your next inhale, slowly reach the arms up overhead, spread the fingers. And exhale, fold forwards, bend your knees, reach your arms back. Dragon wings. Some of you might know this position from my other videos. If you do, really spread the fingers, lower the chest down. And now inhale, come all the way back up. And once again, mountain pose, hands by the side of the body. We're going to do a hands-free vinyasa now. Inhale, lift the arms, reach the fingertips. Exhale, fold down, take your dragon wings. From here, chair pose, sit the hips back, arms parallel to the floor. Take two and one. From here, step the left foot back, back knee down. As you inhale, could you press your palms forwards gently and imagine you're doing chaturanga now. Bring the elbows in towards the sides of the body and then slowly push the hands forwards again. From here, lift the chest, arch back, that's your upward dog. And then from here, tuck the back toes, lift the back knee, high lunge. Take a big step forwards, mountain pose. Let's do that one more time. This is my version of a hands-free vinyasa, folding forwards, dragon wing. Chair pose, getting warmer. Hold for two. Hips back for one. Right foot steps back, back knee down. Now as you bring the hands forwards, in this air chaturanga as I call it, really tense the arms and imagine you're trying to resist something. So as you pull the elbows back, it's actually quite active. And now as you push forwards, really push. Imagine you're pushing something heavy away from you. Lift the chest, lift the arms. There's your upward dog. Hands come forwards, tuck your back toes, big step forwards, mountain pose. Let's do it one more time. Inhale, arms lift. Exhale, dragon wings. Sit the hips back, lift the chest, straighten the arms. Step the left foot back, back knee down. Arms come forwards. Imagine something is pushing into you and you're resisting it. Arms strong. And now you win. Push it away from you. From here, upward dog, arch back. Tuck your back toes, lift the back knee, high lunge, step forwards, mountain pose. Inhale, arms lift, exhale, dragon wings. Chair pose, breathing in, hips back. Right foot steps back, back knee down. Again, prepare for your air chaturanga. Pull the belly button in, squeeze your abs, resist with the hands, make it feel strong, push. And then upward dog, tuck your back toes, lift your back knee, high lunge, and big step forwards, mountain pose. Okay, we're going to spice it up. Inhale, arms lift. Exhale, dragon wings. Chair pose, moving through our wrist free vinyasa, left foot steps back, back knee down. Once again, air chaturanga, elbows in, tummy in. Push, 
upward facing dog. This time from here, hands come forwards, lift your back knee off the floor, step forwards into chair pose. Lift your heels, we're gonna lower down into a squat. We're gonna try and sit down from here. You could use your fingertips or you might be adventurous and roll back, bring the knees into the chest, lie on your back. From here, bring your knees together, feet together. Check your knees are above your hips. Check your shins are parallel to the floor. Take your fingertips to the sides of your head and draw your elbows towards each other. Now press your lower back down into the ground, feel your abs come on, they're there, I promise you have them. And curl the head and shoulders off the floor, breathe here. So I'm not coming up as far as I can and still keeping my lower back pressed down. I can just feel the tips of my shoulder blades on the floor for three. Squeeze the legs together, two, one. Lower the head, keep the legs where they are. This time, open the knees as wide as your shoulders and keep your big toes touching. Let's curl up again. Engage the abs, curl up. Could you point your elbows towards your knees for three? I'm shaking a bit, that's cool. Two, good job if you are two. One, lower down, bring your knees in. We're gonna rock back up to the seated position. And now you could use your fingertips to come up into the squat again, or maybe you take a rock back and use a little bit of momentum to maybe come up. Chair pose. <laughs> take your time, no rush. Let's meet in mountain pose, second side, inhale, arms lift. Exhale to your dragon wings, bowing to the earth. Lift up halfway, chair pose, hips back, right foot back, knee down. Air chaturanga, exhale as you push. Inhale, upward dog, lean back. From here, arms forwards, tuck the back toes, step forwards, chair pose, keep the hips low. Lift the heels. Lower down into the squat, and here we go, lying all the way back down. Again, knees above hips, feet together. Elbows in, curl up, hold. Option this time to straighten the left leg out in front of you, hovering it just, below, uh, just above the floor. Press your lower back down, three. Point the feet beautifully for two. <laughs> One, switch legs. Right leg comes forwards, hold for three, two, keep sending your lower back down, one, bring the knees in, keep the knees above the hips, lower the head, Ooh, take a breather, but keep the legs active, keep squeezing the knees together. Once again, open your knees as wide as your shoulders. This time, take your hands and imagine you're trying to push them into the ceiling. Just go easy with your wrists. And now we're gonna curl up and bring the knees towards the elbows. Maybe the knees touch the elbows. Keep the big toes touched, scoop in, push, three. You are now in crow pose, two. Belly on, one, take a big stretch out. Walk your feet back in. We're rocking back up into the squat, coming into it anywhere you need to. And from here, mountain pose. Take a breath or two. If you like, you could bring the palms to join. Again, if that feels a bit funky in your wrists, you could bring the fingertips together, kind of a Zen position. Zen fingertips, I call this. Very beautiful. So you could have your Zen fingertips. We're gonna add onto this sequence now. From here, inhale, arms lift. Exhale, jag and wings. Halfway up into your chair pose, left foot steps back again. This is our vinyasa, elbows in, air chaturanga. Make it active, tense the arms as you push. You should be shaking in the arms. Inhale, lift, upward dog. Back toes tuck, high lunge. This time warrior two, opening out. If you're newer to warrior two, just check your front knee is stacked above your front ankle and your back toes are turned in a little bit. Turn your front palm up, let's reverse, breath in. Reach both arms forwards like you could catch hold of the sun and then reverse again. Once again, reach forwards, catch the sun, and now carry the sun low and slow across your mat. Pivot on your feet, warrior two at the back of your mat. 
Again, check in with that front knee. Back toes turned in. Reversing. Reach the arms forwards, get really long. Reverse, really press into your right heel and reach the arms, carry the sun across your mat. Warrior two at the front. From here, could you shorten your stance by about a third? Step that back foot in about a third of the way, hands to your hips. Square the pelvis to the front of your mat. Straighten both legs. From here, could you reach the arms back, dragon wings, fingers active. And now fold forwards, right hip moves back, heart moves forwards. Could you go for length rather than getting low? Don't worry about getting really low down. Think about how long and impressive you could look. Modified pyramid. If you like micro details, press the base of your front big toe down. That'll make the leg work a little bit more. From here, bend the front knee, warrior three. Back leg comes up, point the foot, roll the leg in for three, for two, for one. Step to the front of your mat, mountain pose. Palms together or Zen fingertips. Just a breath or two. Calm things down. Release the hands, mountain pose. Inhale, arms lift, second side. Exhale, bowing to Mother Earth, dragon wings. Chair pose, the heart lifts, honoring the horizon. Right foot steps back. Air chaturanga, elbows in. Pull the shoulders down, squeeze your core. Squeeze your core as you push the hands, upward facing dog. From here, back toes tuck, back knee lifts, lifting up high lunge. From here, opening out, warrior two. Reversing as you breathe in, same sequence. Reach for the sun, this time travel. Low, bend the knees, scoot the hips. Warrior two, back of your mat. Flowing, reversing. Reaching for the sun, carry it across your mat. Warrior two, reversing. Hands to your hips, step your back foot in about a third of the way. Square the hips forwards. Pyramid pose with dragon arms or dragon wings. Really draw your left hip back. Really draw it back and up. You might notice that intensifies the stretch. Press into the base of your front big toe. But don't forget the back leg. Press the back foot down as well. Warrior three, bend your front knee, back leg lifts, up we come, point the foot, three, wobble, wobble, me two, two, one, step to the front of your mat, mountain pose. <sighs> Again, just take a moment, settle the breath. We can calm the breath, often the body becomes calm and the mind becomes calm. We think of body, mind, heart as separate things, but of course they're all interlinked, right? In that sense, if we calm one area, we might calm the others. Release your hands. We're gonna keep building on this sequence. Inhale, arms lift. Exhale, dragon wings, bowing to the earth, folding. Halfway up, chair pose. Left foot steps back, air chaturanga. Exhale as you push. Inhale, lift the chest, arching back. And now from here, tuck the back toes, lift the back knee, high lunge to warrior two. Reversing. This time, reach for the sun, pause here. We're gonna lift into half moon. Slide your back foot in, hands free half moon. Open the arms. I know a few of you have been really battling with this in the comments, in the other videos. That's fab. It takes time. Hold, hold, hold. Replace the foot, catch the sun, travel across your mat, low and slow. Warrior two, reverse, same thing. Reach forwards, half moon, arms open. The trick to half moon is to really press through that right heel and really lift your upper back muscles, which clearly isn't working for me right now. <laughs> okay, there we go. And now return the foot, reach for the sun. Travel to the front of your mat, warrior two. 
Turn your back heel, high lunge. Warrior three with dragon wings this time. Arms out, fingers active. Warrior three. Step the feet together, chair pose, breathe in. Sit the hips back, we're gonna roll all the way onto the back. Bring the knees in, knees above the hips from here. Open your knees as wide as your shoulders again. Big toes touch. Push the hands up. Our modified crow pose. Curl up. See if you can bring the knees to touch the elbows. If you can't, don't worry. If you can, start to slide the knees up to the outer triceps and squeeze the knees against the arms. Three. Round the back. Two. One. Take a big stretch out. <sighs> Bring your knees straight back in, knees above hips, knees squeeze together this time, feet together. Press your palms to the sky, curl up, keep the knees together. And now this time, could you take your arms to the left, go over and push forwards with the hands. Can you bring your outer left knee and your right elbow to touch? Push them together, press the knee and the elbow together. This is your side crow, three, Lift the chest, two, you got it, one. Come back to center, inhale, other side. Exhale, twist. Bring the knee towards the elbow, press the knee and elbow together. Push the hands for three, two, one. Release, stretch out, breath in. No rest, breath out, knees up, rock forwards. Chair pose, take your time. Join me when you can. Mountain pose, palms or fingertips together. Settle the breath, oh. settle the heart rate. Release the hands. We're gonna keep building on this sequence, folks. Inhale, arms lift. Exhale, dragon wings. Chair pose. Step the left foot back, air chaturanga. Now, if you're taking other vinyasa classes, you can totally substitute this little sequence. Arms come up, so you don't have to bring weight into the hands in your vinyasa. Tuck the back toes, lift the back knee. This time, listen closely. Open your arms to the right standing twist. Spread the arms, turn the chest. Inhale back to center, exhale, warrior two. Same sequence, but building, reverse. Hands free, half moon, lifting up, very briefly this time. And then return the foot, reach for the sun, carry the sun across the mat, warrior two. Again, reversing, reaching the arms, half moon. One side is always trickier than the other. And then return the foot, reach for the sun, travel. Warrior two, back heel lift. Warrior three again. This time listen carefully. Bring your left knee in towards your chest, come to stand up. And can you cross the left ankle over the right thigh, just above the knee, so it looked like this. And now send the hips back. And the option to rest the elbows on the shin if you've got lots of space here. If you've got tons of space, fingertips could lightly brush the ground. I'm not bringing very much weight into them, but I am bringing my chest towards my shin. That might seem too deep for you. That's totally fine. If it is, it's working up here. Three, two, one. Release, inhale, arms lift. Exhale, dragon wings, keeping it flowy, chair pose. We're gonna roll back, hips down, rocking back. Once again, knees together, big toes together. Open the knees, crow pose, push up, knees onto the elbows or outside the triceps. Really lift up. Think about scooping your belly in. Two and one, stretch out. Walk your feet back in. This time feet hip distance apart. Could you cross your left ankle over your right knee? 
Flex the foot, that's gonna be useful in a minute. From here, and now this is tricky, press your hands towards the sky. Option one, breathe here. Option two, start to bring that right knee into your chest. Active hip stretch. And now you could even curl up and start to bring your elbows to rest on the shin if you have the space. If you've got loads of space, your left knee is gonna come onto your triceps and the right toes are gonna to hook around your right upper arm. Don't worry if you're not this high upper arm, but working towards that. Now, if you have a hook with the foot and it's really steady, you could even straighten that right leg out. This is an arm balance called Galavasana, flying pigeon. But again, if I've not got my toes hooked, it's not gonna work. So you could keep the knee bent. Two, one, release. Heroic effort, folks. Oh, stretch out. Again, keeping it flowing, knees in. Keep your heart rate going, rocking up. Chair pose, mountain pose. Just for a minute, standing together. If you bring your feet as wide as your shoulders, soften the knees, relax the knees. We'll take a clearing practice from Tai Chi, Qigong. Palms come out. The sense if there's any frustration or just any baggage coming up, anything that's weighing you down, get a sense that you could collect that, gather, scoop it up. Once you've got it all, let's get rid of it. Exhale, press the hands down. Ah, clearing all the junk out that you don't need. Oh. Step into the front of your mat again. Second side, inhale, arms lift. Exhale, dragon wings bowing to the earth. Chair pose, heart shining to the horizon, right foot steps back, air chaturanga. Contract your abs, push the hands, upward dog. And then back toes tuck, high lunge. Breathe in, lift your arms. Open your arms to the left this time. Sometimes we lean really far forwards in this posture. Imagine you're being pulled back through the left hand, so you're nice and upright. And then inhale, center, exhale, warrior two. Reversing. Once again, half moon. Now this time, super tricky. If you're feeling really adventurous, see if you can lift your, I can't even get in the pose. See if you can lift the left heel off the ground. Come onto the ball of the foot in your half moon. Ugh and then step the foot back, travel with the sun across your mat. Warrior two, reversing. And again, half moon, hands free. If you're really steady, think about lifting the right heel off the floor. Yes, I got it this time, nope, lost it. And travel with the sun, warrior two. From here, high lunge, get ready for your warrior three. Dragon wings. And now bring the knee into the chest. Cross the ankle over the knee. Figure forward the legs, hips back. And you could breathe here, or elbows on the shin, or fingertips on the earth. If your fingertips are on the earth, you could get a feel for hooking those toes around the upper arm again. So you really hook the toes onto the arm, like you're trying to grip on, like monkey grip. And then from here, slowly release mountain pose. Inhale, arms lift. Exhale, fold. Lift up halfway and then sitting down, rolling back. Again, crow pose, big toes together, knees towards the upper arms. Feel this shape a kind of cornerstone arm balance, and then release. Right ankle over left knee. Again, give yourself a moment, feel the hips level. This right foot is active, toes hooked. And now again, push up to the sky, straighten the arms, spread the fingers. Option to breathe here or to curl the chest up and bring the left knee in. You might be holding here, it's really active, 
or maybe you've hooked the toes around the upper arm. And if you've got a good grip, you might experiment straightening the left leg, pointing the foot. Three, two, one. Beautiful effort, release. Stretch out in a star shape. Okay. So bring your knees in again. We're gonna be on the ground from here on out. Rock up. <clears throat> And I want to talk to you a little bit about handstand on the ground without putting the hands on the floor. You can still build lots of core strength and shoulder strength. And these are actually drills which you can use for your handstand practice anyway. They come from handstand. So we're going to play with the legs a bit. So take a look at your legs out in front of you. And don't worry too much about sitting tall. Just have the legs straight. And then can you flex the toes, curl them in, and then point them. Flex, point, flex, point. They're gonna stay pointed now. Squeeze the heels together and see if you can get the heels and the big toes to touch. The feet are really snugly. Squeeze the legs inwards so the inner thighs are switched on. So these are handstand legs, really active. See if you can lift the kneecaps, engage the quads, make the legs feel really active. Give them a poke, are they switched on? Yeah, okay, remember that. We're gonna lie back down. So, can you find those handstand legs again? Squeeze the heels and the big toes together, point them, and now squeeze the legs in so they feel really active. Lift the kneecaps, legs are on. From here, reach your fingertips towards your toes, spread them. Lift your chin and shoulders off the floor, hold. Check your lower back is flat against the ground. You could use a hand to check. Oop, mine's not entirely, so I'm gonna push down. There we go, really active in the core. Option one, breathe here. Option two, lift the left leg 45 degrees. Keep the legs pointed. Drop the chin in, switch the legs. Both legs are still active, even though they're split apart. Lower down, take a rest. So this time, looking towards the arms, let your legs rest for a sec. Again, could you press the palms towards the sky? If this feels too much in the wrists, you could simply change the angle, but get the feeling that the shoulders are pushing up. So really push up. And as you do that, you'll feel your shoulders lift off the floor. That's good. Really, really lift. And now add in the legs, toes point, squeeze the legs together. And now as you curl up, push the hands, but take them towards the ceiling. It's gonna be really tough. Push, push, push. Three, arms straight up, check they're right above you. Two, one, lower down. Just give your knees a little swish. <clears throat> so we're gonna add these things together, but as always options. So, <clears throat> Once again, take the fingertips forwards, legs on, coming up. Option one, keep the legs down. Option two, both legs up, 45 degrees, press your lower back down. Option three, palms above you, push through the shoulders, five. Look at your hands if you're here, four, three, pull the belly in. Two, you've got this, one more, and release. Hug the knees in. And again, you could take a little twist side to side. We've got one more round with the grand finale. So if this is feeling super, super tough, I'm gonna invite you to stay with what you've just done, do that again, and come back to this practice in the future as you get stronger and stronger. If you're feeling pretty toughened up and strong right now, Final option, so from here, lift the chest, legs on. Legs at a 45 degree angle, arms overhead. If you wanna go a little bit further this time, take the arms behind you, float the hands off the floor, look at the hands. Hands are not on the floor, push through the hands, five, four. If you wanna really switch it up, lower the feet even lower, three, lower back down into the ground, two, and one, release. Oh, it's magic. Give your knees a little rock side to side. 
So you can work your handstand without coming onto the hands. <laughs> We're going to cool things down and stretch things out, folks. Walk your feet in, bend your knees. And just let your arms rest by the sides of your body. Let's stretch the front of the body out. Tuck the tailbone, lift the hips to the sky, bridge. My focus here is on stretching my abs and the front of my hips. So I'm going to really tuck my tailbone and lift up. Get a feeling of length through the front of your body. Two. And one. Lower down. From here, gently bring your right knee into your chest. <clears throat> and if it feels okay in your wrists, you could link the fingers behind the thigh. If that feels a bit too much, if they're really sensitive right now, just take the hands either side of the knee, gently support. I'm going to straighten that right leg. It doesn't have to be totally straight. We're just working to get a little bit of length in the back of the leg. Option to straighten the left leg. You could be gently holding the knee or linking the fingers. Once again, bend that right knee, straighten the left leg. Let's take a little twist, knee over the body. If you like, you could take a deep breath in with me and out through your mouth with me. Come back to center, left knee comes in, either link behind the thigh or gently support either side of the knee, lengthening. See if your jaw and your shoulders could soften a bit. You might straighten the right leg. Bring the left knee in. Take a little twist over the body. And again, you might take a deep breath in. And out. <sighs> Slowly return to center and let's take a, just a minute or so rest in Shavasana. You've earned it. Not that you need to earn rest, you deserve that inherently already. I'm just placing the body in a way which feels comfortable, mostly symmetrical and settled. If it's easy to relax and rest in Shavasana, just really let yourself go. If you have the kind of mind which is a bit more active, what you could do is use that to your advantage and bring your mind to the muscles of your face and your jaw. And just notice if anything could soften or release there. Could anything ungrip? And if your mind is ever really active in Shavasana, you can do this and slowly scan your attention down through your body, from your head to your feet, just noticing if there's areas of tension that could soften. Sensing the breath naturally has settled, the heartbeat has settled. And perhaps acknowledging that although sometimes we have a difficult relationship with our bodies, our bodies are always working for us, always fighting for our survival, always optimizing. So this sense of the body loving you in a way, 
even though admittedly it's really hard sometimes to love it back, right? But perhaps the simple sense that your body is loving you, is trying its best, whether you're healing or simply being. Okay, let's start to deepen the breath. Bring small movements back to fingers and toes. And take a long stretch out. Walk your feet in. Just rolling to one side. You could use one arm as a pillow. Just give yourself just a moment here. And then slowly coming up in just whatever way is most comfortable and easy for you. So, just as we close in a seated position, you bring your palms together, Zen the fingertips. <laughs> and then bowing head to heart, but the heart and the head bowing to the body, and all its ups and downs. Still a miraculous, mysterious thing. We bow to our body, acknowledging all it, got, all it gives us and does for us. And we close here. So, thank you everybody. A pleasure as always. And I hope that this new practice offers you some variety, some new interest in your wrist-free practices and proves that you can still work really hard, you can still work on all those patterns and all that strength for your arm balances and handstands whilst you wait for your wrists to do their magic and recover. Sending you all of my love, please leave me feedback below and I'll see you all again very soon. Ciao for now.